This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. And good evening. The count continues to go up. 110 people now confirmed dead in that devastating wildfire on Maui. And as the grim search in the ashes continues, people with missing loved ones are being asked to provide DNA samples. And those who have lost homes and businesses are trying to figure out what is next. One community here in California knows exactly what they're going through. The images rem reminiscent of the 2018 campfire, which nearly wiped out the entire community of paradise. 85 people died and 18,000 buildings burned. Since then, they've worked to rebuild the town and hope their experience can be a help to the people of Maui. John Ramis, he went to the town of paradise and he heard from survivors there. It's been five years since the terrible campfire destroyed almost all of the town of Paradise. But now that it's happened in Lahaina, Maui, they're hoping that this town can stop being known as a place of disaster and start being a place of inspiration. There had been fires before, but what happened on November 8, 2018 was something no one could have imagined. Now, five years later, the devastation of Paradise has been repeated in Lahaina. It was so much like what we had here, and it, it, and it, was, uh, it was very hard to watch. Um, your heart just sunk watching it. All of the images of the ashes and the burned cars and the, the total destruction as far as the eye can see, that's what it was like here too. Looking at paradise, it's hard to envision that it was once a densely forested community. Now it looks a bit like the high desert, although amidst the stumps, new trees have begun to sprout. About a third of the population has returned and home construction is ongoing. The commercial district is still pretty sparse, but one building that by some miracles survived is Snoop Sisters Vintage and More. Owner Teresa Iman says the secondhand store has become important for helping victims locate items that remind them of things lost in the fire. And it's the little tiny things I'll never forget. A friend of mine reached down and he picked up a rubber band after the fire and he said, I have a rubber band. I own a rubber band and he put it in his pocket. He still has the rubber band, but it was the only thing he owned. It's an important lesson for Lahaina. The residents didn't just lose their houses, they lost their entire sense of place. And Mayor Greg Boland says there are difficult psychological hurdles to cross. People are angry um, and we went through that. Um, because they're hurting and they take it out on public officials, they take it out on the people that are keeping them from going in because they got to look for, for bodies and stuff and it's, it, is, it is a very emotional time. Island officials have already begun reaching out to Paradise for advice and while you might think the town would be tired of being identified for the worst day in its history, Recovery Director Colette Curtis says it has actually given them a sense of purpose. We feel that we're a lot more than that. We're a lot more than this disaster. However, we really take this as a very special responsibility that has been bestowed on us to learn from this, to you know figure out how to get through this and to show other communities and other people how you can survive something like this. I'm happy we're there. I'm happy we can do it. It does bring back those memories and those uses that you, you, know, you don't want to stir back up, but it's important for them for us to be there for them. We know what they feel. They know the loneliness. We know the feeling of everyone forgot, but we haven't. We're, we're not forgetting, we'll never forget. We haven't forgotten here and we won't forget you either. What was once unimaginable must now be planned for, and the lessons of paradise are there to help Lahaina and whoever else is next. The mayor says like a lot of rural communities, Paradise also faces an insurance crisis, despite the fact that there isn't much left to burn. Property owners are dealing with price increases that are hampering their effort to rebuild. And tonight, another similarity emerging between the two fires. The cell phone video from Maui shows power lines blowing in the wind. One witness said he saw a power pole snap and ignite the grass. Well, the exact cause of the fire is still not clear. A class action lawsuit has already been filed against Hawaiian Electric for not shutting off power during the high winds. The campfire in Paradise also ignited from a faulty transmission line and was quickly spread by wind. You can certainly find more information on how to help the Maui wildfire victims on our website, kpix.com. 
Turning to other news and very sad news. Flowers and safety signs mark the San Francisco intersection where a four-year-old little girl was hit and killed yesterday as her parents pushed her stroller across the street. They were in a crosswalk at 4th and King when an SUV turned right and hit them. It happened around 5 p.m. yesterday. 24 hours later, community members and street safety advocates gathered for a vigil at the spot where they displayed a white stroller in the little girl's memory. This should be a specific area of focus for our city to make us safe. Like I said, there's so much foot traffic between Caltrain, Safeway, all the units, and this is an on-ramp to a highway. Cars are already treating it as if it's the highway, but it's not. This is a neighborhood, and it needs to be designed as if it's a neighborhood street. The driver of the SUV, 71-year-old Karen Cartagena, stayed at the scene. Police say she was not impaired, but she was later arrested for vehicular manslaughter and failure to yield. Now, about an hour ago, we got an update on the condition of a San Jose police officer who was shot while responding to a call this morning. And Ann Makovic joining me now in the studio with more on that and how the officer is doing right now. Yes, she is in critical condition, but stable condition, according to the police chief. And we just found out more about the man accused of shooting her. He has been arrested, 44-year-old Gabriel Carteras. Police tell us he's a convicted felon who never should have had a gun in the first place. They say he ambushed the officer. This started with a woman calling 911 this morning saying her husband was drunk and trying to hit her. She hid in the bathroom, but she said he started breaking down the door. This was just before 8 a.m. in the Midtown Plaza condo complex at Azuras Avenue and Race Street. When officers got there, they say a man from the home immediately started shooting down at the officers as they were walking up to the building. One female officer was shot. The police chief says her partner jumped into action. Was well, followed next was an act of undeniable courage that few of us will ever experience. Without hesitation or consideration for himself, the officer's partner extracted the victim officer from the line of fire to a place of safety where he began to treat her injuries. Actions that surely contributed to both of them surviving this deadly attack. The police say after the shooting, Carteras barricaded himself in the apartment, refusing to come out. This lasted for about four hours, and police fired off some non-lethal weapons, including what appeared to be tear gas. And soon after, we saw one man being loaded into an ambulance. We believe that was the suspect. Sources within the police department say he might have been bitten by a police canine as officers were arresting him. Now, the police chief did not reveal the identity of the injured officer, but they say that she has 10 years of experience, and this is the first female officer to be shot on the job in San Jose. Oh, tragic. We'll continue to follow her condition as well yes. in the hospital. And thank you. All right, coming up, she struggled with depression, but now she's getting help on campus. The important lesson about student mental health as school starts back up again. But since COVID, there was a clear need to help students uh, more than just academically. There's a lot going on tonight. Some thunderstorms in the Bay Area, and there's more on the way. And with that, of course, the risk of lightning-induced fire. And that's not all. There's a cool change on the way. We'll have it all when we cover the forecast when we come back.